So you kind of just see yourself and, um, and just the ministry kind of like a bridge between uh, churches and other ministries and other people or other businessmen who have resources yeah. and, uh, and to kind of bring those resources across this bridge into the inner city where they need that kind of help and that kind that's of right. resource. And, and uh, that is, that's powerful, that's powerful. I think, uh, you know, we live in a culture and we live in a day, live in a nation where uh, I think, I don't know, if, you know, thank God for, the, you know, the government and thank God for every, all the government programs that, that, uh, that are available to people. But I think the original intention of God was that the church was supposed to be able to do yes. stuff like that, you know, That's right. and not rely upon the government. Uh, but because a lot of times people, we, you know, we want to preach the gospel, tell them about eternal salvation. And yet they've got so many physical lack and needs mm -hmm. in their life. And they, like you said, they might be, whether, whether it's clothes or h hunger and uh, food, uh, money, whatever, to pay bills. And, uh, and sometimes you just have to meet that tangible need to kind yes. of open up their heart yes. to really meet the, the real spiritual need on the inside of them. Yes. And, uh, and I think Jesus mm -hmm. really kind of dealt with that and talked a lot about that, you know, saying, listen, you know, if you've ministered or served the least of these, mm -hmm. you've done it unto me. That's and if right. you're not willing to do it to the least, uh, uh, you're not really doing it to me. That's so right. that's just a that's right. powerful, powerful ministry. Well, and I think that the thing about that, we all often hear about, we have to separate the church and the state, mm -hmm. but we really have to get them to work together. Yeah. If we're really going to be effective, mm -hmm. whether it's religion or, or the church mm -hmm. or the state, but I think that the thing the state can do and do maybe fairly well mm -hmm. is take care of the physical needs, mm -hmm. the body needs, you might say, of okay. the community. Yeah. Sure but they can't take care of the heart yes. of the community. That's true. And that's where I think the church can be very effective yes. in partnering mm -hmm. with the city. Uh, for example, we work very, I, I know Mayor Barrett very well, uh, and he's a good friend. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the police chief, Ed Flynn, yes. is a, a, a wonderful man. Uh, the DA, John Chisholm, I know very well, uh, and uh, those men are dedicated men to help the people of the, mm -hmm. our city. Absolutely. But they're also looking for the spirit yeah. to be strengthened in mm -hmm. the city, where people can start respecting each other in a deeper way, because sure. there's relationships of understanding. Right. So we've built partnerships with, for example, the police department mm -hmm. in dealing with the homeless. Yes. And the homeless is a good example of the poverty mm -hmm. that is growing in our city because of the economic conditions. Sure. But the police can oftentimes come and pick up a homeless person, mm -hmm. and the only, the, the only place they know where to put them is in jail. Okay. That's not the best place for a homeless person sure. who, who is try, who really needs to be rescued. Absolutely. And yeah. so we are putting together and have put together a group of street chaplains to partner with the police so that wow. when they run into somebody they don't know really what to do with, they mm -hmm. can call, call our number. Yeah. We'll send two, we always go with pairs, two people, either two men or two women, mm -hmm to go and meet with the police on the street and work with the homeless people wow. and to help them then get into a, a place that they can be safe and secure mm. and helped because we really want to help them become restored. Mm. And to do that through Jesus Christ and through his love, through brothers and sisters yes. who are willing and eager to serve, yes. it just is a natural. Yep. So we're de delighted to be on the front lines of probably the most difficult and dangerous areas of the city, mm -hmm. uh, but yet doing something that we're bringing God's love. And that's what Jesus did when he was on earth. That's right. He was on the streets and yes. he talked to the people yes. there. And that's what we want to do. And that's, that's what we that's do. That's absolutely wonderful. That's precious. Uh, yeah, I think uh, um, this ministry is really uh, uh, a real great tool in the hand of the Lord to, to really bring, not only to help people that are in need like that, but to, I'm to, as a pastor, I always kind of think of, uh, of how can we awaken the hearts and the minds of Christians mm -hmm. 
Because mm -hmm. I think like what you're saying is sometimes Christians, especially in a, in a nation like ours that we live in, they kind of think that, well, the government, the state, the federal is taking care of that, that I don't have mm -hmm. to really concern myself with that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think, I don't think it's one or the other. I think it's both. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, I'm my, one of my prayers for this broadcast is today that it will awaken in the heart. So, cause I know many Christians will be watching the broadcast mm -hmm. that, you know mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Thank goodness for the, for the, the city programs and the state programs and the federal programs, but that does not excuse us from reaching out and helping right. the homeless and the hurting right. and, and those that are in, in poverty. Right. The thing we've been talking about a lot with our, with our staff and with our volunteers and so on, is there are a lot of people, particularly in the suburbs, not only in the suburbs, in the city too, mm -hmm. that want to help their neighbor. Sure. And of course, we're commanded to love God above all yeah. and love our neighbor as ourselves. And so finding on-ramps yes. to that opportunity to serve yeah. is really a key. And mm. so we've put together some tools to help people that they may want to just pray for the city. Mm. And that's a very, very important function because everything we do is bathed, is bathed and on a foundation of prayer. Mm -hmm. And without that, we, we would not see the miracles that we see. Yes. But there are other things that can be done, very practical ways yes. of Going into the city is a very frightening experience for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Okay. Uh, going past 124th Street is as far as they want to go uh, many times. But we can help them and provide opportunities where they would go with somebody that knows the area, mm -hmm. knows the people. We can introduce them to opportunities to serve that really make it so much easier. And once they do that, once they find out how great the people in the city really are. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of dear, dear, loving Christian people in the city of Milwaukee. Mm, yeah. And it's all they have to do is get to know them. Yeah. One of the things that's very different uh -huh. is that uh, they can provide their gifts mm -hmm. of time, yes. talents, yes. and treasure. Uh -huh. And usually that's as far as it goes. But in the city of Milwaukee, we add the touch. Mm. which is a hug. Mm, that's good. And there are a lot of loving people that need a hug. Yes. But we also add the tears because there are tears of sorrow, yes. sadness. Yes. But if you get to know them in their relationship, there can be tears of joy. Yes. And, and there are many, many experiences that happen with people that really get to know each other. Mm -hmm. And the important things are not the time, treasure, and talents. It's the touch and the tears. Mm -hmm. And that's what builds the unity in our community. Yeah. So you mentioned the bridge. It's yeah. very interesting about the bridge because my name is Dutch. And a quackle in Dutch is a bridge. No kidding. And a quackelaar is someone who builds bridges over canals. Those, and so, wow. so the canals, of course, are all all over the Netherlands. We lived in the Netherlands, so that's how we found out about this. But building the bridge between the valuable people in the mm -hmm. city with the valuable resources of mm -hmm. the suburbs, yes. that bridge is critical mm -hmm. to the survival and the growth and the expansion of what can be so beautiful about Milwaukee. Yes. And so that's what we're really excited about. And I believe God's kingdom is coming to Milwaukee. Yeah. And we're seeing mm. signs of that all the time. Praise God. And I just, I praise God for that. Yeah, that's that's, right. that is awesome. I, 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 Arne, as I was just, you know, as the first time I met you and just heard about your ministry and, uh, and it's been talking with you, um, that's, that's what I saw, like, kind of like a picture. I see pictures and I just saw, I see Arne, I see that ministry and I just saw this bridge, you know. And somebody years ago came up with a statement that, you know, we need to build that bridge of friendship. Yeah. that will sustain the weight of truth. Yeah. And I see you guys doing that. And yes. uh, you can't just walk up to somebody and tell them, listen, this is what you need to do until you've served them. Right. And so it, I just commend you, all of those that are working with you, uh, just for your heart of servanthood and just reaching right. out with the love of Christ. Well, Arne, let's just take a, a short, brief break right here. And we're gonna come right back with Arne and uh, we're gonna talk some more about basics and. Uh, 
and maybe how you can get involved with that ministry. Because uh, I know that uh, some of you that are watching the broadcast today, I know that God's touching your heart and saying, man, I, that, that's something that I, that I can do. That's something that I want to be involved in. 